I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today, reporting from Orlando at the American College of Cardiology meeting. Statins in the water? That issue is not going away, as we heard here today. In two presentations at the ACC meeting, Dr. Paul Ritker and his co-investigators provided more evidence of the efficacy of statin treatment in an apparently healthy population with an elevation of CRP. There are, however, many questions remaining. And so we asked Dr. Ritker. Back in November, what we presented was the main clinical finding. If half of all heart attacks and strokes occur among apparently healthy men and women who have average, if not low, levels of cholesterol, if we can identify high-risk people who have an elevated CRP, and if we give them a statin, what happens? Well, the answer was a very big clinical benefit. 50% reduction in heart attack, 50% reduction in stroke, 20% reduction in mortality, 45% reduction in bypass and angioplasty. Pretty good outcome. That was last November. The question now becomes, what was the mechanism of that benefit? Was it due to cholesterol reduction? Was it due to CRP reduction? Or was it due to both? So we built into the Jupiter protocol these questions up front. What we're presenting at these meetings are the results of that analysis, and it's quite remarkable. After you look at these data very carefully, it's absolutely clear you do want your LDL down very aggressively. No doubt about that. But you also want your CRP down very aggressively. In fact, the best outcomes in the Jupiter trial are among those who not only get the LDL cholesterol below 70, but who also get the HSCRP below 1. That group has an 80% reduction in vascular events. It's pretty exciting data. You also did an analysis based on the percent reduction, and you've said that that's important as well, and I'm wondering if you could just extra explain that. You're absolutely right. So we also looked at this as, did the LDL come down more than 50 percent, which was better than if it did not, and did the CRP come down more than 50 percent, which was better than if it did not. And once again, if both came down more than 50 percent, that was even better. Remember that not all patients respond the same. Some patients get an LDL reduction to a statin, some get a CRP reduction, some get neither, and some get both. What we now understand is getting low levels of both inflammation and cholesterol are adding to this benefit. But you're asking a more sophisticated question. Is it about getting to a certain target level, say less than 100 or less than 70 for LDL, or less than 2 or less than 1 for CRP? Or is it more important to think about percent reduction? I have to admit, in my own research, my own understanding of the statin trials, I prefer percent reduction. It's very hard for a patient whose LDL is 200 to get it to 70. Whereas if they can go from 200 to 100, that's a 50% reduction. We should tell the patient they're doing very, very well. Same thing with CRP. If it starts at 4 and it gets down to 2, we think that's pretty good. Yes, it would be better if it got to 1, but that's already a 50% drop. So I think we have to set reasonable goals for our patients and reinforce good behavior. Remember, it's diet, it's exercise, it's smoking cessation. Those things are going to help. And if they initiate a statin, we now have evidence suggesting that both an LDL reduction and a CRP reduction matter. And I'm trying to make it possible for our patients to feel good about they're taking their therapies, they're being compliant. In some of these patients, um, actually, you don't get any reduction. And there's that, that, that question remains. Why are these patients uh, not, why does it not work? Um, and is that part of what you're going to be looking at going forward, just trying to understand why this works, why a statin works sometimes, and other times it just simply doesn't? Well, Peggy, it's a very interesting biologic issue. We do have patients in Jupiter who took their statin, and they got a modest LDL reduction and a modest CRP reduction, and a really only a small benefit, if at all. So we're asking the question now, why is that? Well, it's not due to any baseline clinical characteristic that we have yet identified, and it's not due to any particular behavior that we've yet identified. That makes us wonder if it might be genetic. So we're now embarking on a major new study to take a, the Jupiter patients and do a genome-wide association study, asking the question, are there genetic variants between all of us that might help us to understand why some patients get a cholesterol reduction, others get a CRP reduction, who might get both? And we might be able to use that data to better target therapy and figure out new pathways for disease. Mm -hmm. But that'll be in the future a few years. So, as we heard, CRP appears to be as effective a predictor of outcomes as LDL. In Orlando, at the American College of Cardiology, I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today.